Hello, Paul Harvey fans. Being in an airplane as it's crashing back to Earth is nothing short of terrifying. Crashing into the ocean far from land is even more terrifying. If you survive the crash, what do you do then? In this episode of The Rest of the Story, Paul Harvey will tell you of one such plane crash. Stay tuned after Mr. Harvey's broadcast and I'll share more about this incident. Here's Paul Harvey. Now, the rest of the story. The pilot of the Naval Torpedo Bomber knew that he should not have let that 20-year-old Army private on board. Now both of them were going to die. The pilot's faulty judgment was understandable enough. The young private had been frantic. Stuck in Seattle, his weekend pass running out fast. He would be AWOL if he couldn't fly immediately to Monterey and scramble back to Fort Ord before bed check. No, the private had explained he could not afford commercial airfare, but he had been advised that uniformed military could hitch a ride on naval aircraft, providing there was an extra seat. That's how he'd made it to Seattle to visit his girlfriend in the first place. But there were no seats aboard the torpedo bomber, the pilot had explained. The only available space was in the radar compartment in the tail of the plane, and the private would never fit in there. But the young man begged, and the pilot relented, and they squeezed the former into the radar compartment, and they had taken off for the Naval Air Station at Monterey. Well, that was hours ago. They should have landed by now. But the coast of California was socked in. Fog. No way to find the air base. No way even to stay aloft over land unless they wanted to knock the top off a mountain or maybe run out of fuel and crash in a populated area. So the pilot headed out to sea. The torpedo bomber was about a mile from shore. When the motor sputtered and died, the pilot brought her down as gently as possible amid the angry swells. And after several bone-jarring jolts, the plane was dead in the water. Twilight was fast becoming night as the pilot and his young hitchhiker clambered out onto the wings of the plane. If they were anywhere near the craft when it sank, they could be sucked down with it. So the two wished each other good luck and dove into the churning Pacific. As night fell, the mild luminescence of tiny sea life set the ocean aglow. In the eerie blue light, the pilot could see the jellyfish swarming, first dozens and then hundreds, it seems. He shouted to the young private, Look out! But the answer was faint in the distance, barely distinguishable from the voice of nature roaring all around them. And then the pilot felt the searing sting of the first jellyfish. And then he was engulfed by them in the glowing sea. Still most of a mile from land, he could only succumb to the poison and to the waves the irresistible forces that raged in the night, and thus he died. So this is a tribute to an unknown soldier. This is a tribute to a Navy pilot running low on fuel who headed out to sea rather than risk one civilian life. And if he is listening from wherever, Sir, I want you to know the young private who hitched a ride on your last flight, the Army boy who so desperately wanted to get back to his own base, did get back. He swam the torturous mile through turbulent seas, teeming with poison tails and bathed in blue fire. He fought the overwhelming fatigue in the treacherous undertow. He walked barefoot eight miles to safety and eventually onto motion picture screens all over the world as Clint Eastwood. From the beginning of his movie career, Clint Eastwood has always played a, a tough guy. Well, now you know how tough he really is. Because now you know... The rest of the story. Several people have pointed out that there's an error in this episode. Here's the rest of the rest of the story. The pilot was Francis Coleman Anderson. I'm happy to report that he survived the crash. Keep in mind that Mr. Harvey began broadcasting the rest of the story decades before the internet made researching events such as this more easily accessible. We're only human, we all make mistakes. The true mistake is when we fail to learn from our mistakes. I can't end this episode without telling you that on January 28, 1953, Lieutenant Anderson and another crewman flew an airplane in a nighttime airfield attack mission over North Korea. Lieutenant Anderson's last radio communication indicated that he was over the town of Sinpo. The military initiated a search and rescue mission, but nothing was found of the airplane or its two occupants. Today, Lieutenant Anderson is among those memorialized on the courts of the missing at the National Memorial Cemetery of the Pacific. 
I'm Brad Dyson, and as Paul Harvey would say, good day. <laughs>